they made Baldur's Gate harder. So patch 6 has come out, which includes even more legendary actions, meaning enemies will be even more capable of breaking you in even more cruel and unusual ways. Welcome to Joystick Journal, where we play new games and new updates with friends. You can check out our first attempt at this game's hardest difficulty right here, but this time we'll be tackling the best game of 2023 with a much more different strategy. Every spell I cast may be my last. Do you really think I fear death? Wow, uh, that sums up the whole playthrough, doesn't it? What if every single time you did something, like cast a spell as a sorcerer in Baldur's Gate, there was a random chance of activating one of, oh. I don't know, 23-ish different effects in the game? Wild Magic is a 5% chance to activate feature, meaning you have to roll a nat 20 to activate it, unless you turn on the Tides of Chaos passive that you receive as a sorcerer. This raises the percentage chance from 5% to a whopping 50% chance to activate. You are gifted with advantage in exchange for this now coin flip of a random chance build, which is pretty useful, and all of this basically results in nearly every fight having some wacky twist to it. So naturally, my friend and I made a Wild Magic Sorcerer and a Wild Magic Barbarian, which always activates Wild Magic 100% of the time when raging. Some Something barbarians do a lot. Both of our characters ended up being half orcs, and that is for one simple reason. One very simple reason. If we didn't have half orcs, we would have just lost our we would, That would have been game over. Half orcs don't instantly die upon hitting zero HP, but instead regain one HP for a second chance slash final stand type mechanic. A racial passive that would literally go on to save our entire playthrough in Act 2 because of a glitch. We'll get to that later on. So without further ado, let's begin our journey to the city of Baldur's Gate on honor mode using nothing but the most chaotic strategies this game has to offer. Our adventure begins with us nearly dying to the first enemy brains that you fight on the beach. They're just one organ, and they almost killed us. Oh my god, oh, it it killed me. But then we got our very first taste of wild magic at the goblin fight just up north. You can use a bonus action. Teleport? Wow, okay. Wild magic, nice. Wild magic is cool. Sometimes it is. After which, we stole Zevlor's gloves, because we are two half-orc soldiers with allegiance to no one but orcs. We helped ourselves to some loot in the Albear Cave, and activated wild magic at the harpy fight to summon... Flumps. And look, while we're here, I still need my Romance Karlak achievement, because it's glitched and I cannot get it to work. And I also happen to need another Wild Magic Barbarian, so allow me to introduce you to my friend, Karlak, the Wild Magic Barbarian. Soon to be girlfriend. My friend added Will, the wild magic sorcerer, to his side, giving us our now permanent four wild magic user squad. We introduced the goblin leaders to the three gigantic ogres we met outside. Gain an additional action this turn? Dude, action surge. Bro! And then I took Karlak to bully her bully, Anders. Anders? Who fucking cares? Fuck Anders. Reckless that. Much better. Inspired by Karlak's burning passion, we then practiced our throwing skills on each other. Take this. Oh, ow, your strength <laughs> modifier. Damn it, Karlak. Oh, you, you, you no, 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 me, no, no. <laughs> then, this game throws the hardest line of dialogue I have seen yet right at my feet. Wild magic, persuasion, every spell I cast could be my last. You think I fear death? Wow, that's really cool. You know, since our last honor mode ended, uh, well, how it ended, that's all I'll say. Go watch it for yourself. My friend and I weren't really too happy with the Zentrum hideout, so... Wow. You may call this unwarranted murder. I call it yeah. wild magic research. Swap positions with the target each time you cast a spell or cantrip. Well, that's amazing. You ready for me to pull her over here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, I want to see what happens. Uh, uh. Get her, fam! <laughs> Afterwards, we head to the Blighted Village, where Karlak did things like this. 
Then we went underground, where she sprouted dark tendrils and wild magically hit everyone close to her. <laughs> My half orc was able to intimidate a fucking mirror into opening. Okay. This leads you to where a scary book on necromancy is. That will come in handy later on. Not remembering we attacked the goblins, we stupidly fast travel back to the goblin hideout waypoint and nearly lost everyone. Let's fucking go. Good work, Gruul Knock. Good work. Splinter cell time, bro. We regrouped outside the goblin camp and resumed our usual schedule of barbarian programming. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Followed up by the Goblin Bridge of Death holiday okay. special. Oh, yeah. No. Oh, I can't. I'm just, I'm, I'm Bubble Boy. I'm, a, I'm essentially <laughs> Bubble Boy. That's all. It sounded way cooler at first. Like, cannot be damaged. Oh, it can't be damaged because you can't damage either. Raphael the Devil tried to show up around this oh. point, and we wanted nothing to do with his non half orc have an ass, so we said, Be gone! What? He popped. Uh. Alright, what now? Okay. <laughs> Underneath the goblins is the Underdark, where we steal because it's really not stealing if you just leave all your potions out in the open. The whole fucking no shot. You're about to be like, hold on, I'm returning my guys to camp. Just <laughs> Minotaurs showed me that I can restore sorcerer points based on the spell slots I use. At the end of your turn, each spell you cast restores sorcery points equal to its spell slot. Well, that's sick. <laughs> yes. And I foolishly fuck up the dialogue with this Dwegar, who then silences and downs my character before I even get a turn. The Myconids were promising like a whole treasure cave for doing this, but after this, I genuinely hated those guys anyway. Oh wait, we never fought those owlbears. Nice, nice work, nice work. Well, Will's pretty much dead, but it's fine. Torment! Oh, look wow. at that healing! You, how, did, how did you heal that? What? With wild magic! Spectral flump. Hold up! Level 5 is here. Alright, so now that we have double attacks and double throws, let's take the first boat out of here to fight some slave driving asshats. What do these mamba jambas want? You! What are you doing on Gexraft? Maybe. Oh. Hey, wow! That, oh, yeah. Fork passive. Nice he, save he on the insta-kill. Wow, this is going... Oh. No, he, no, he killed them. Did you know you can even stop these asshats from discarding a body that is holding a free invisibility ring? Okay, so on honor mode, going invisible and leaving the fight is absolutely necessary at times where you roll a really low initiative and just die before you make a single move. So having a ring that can just make you invisible is clutch, especially when you have no rogues on your team. Moving on, we free Nair, the king asshat, and we engage him in wild magic combat. <laughs> Bye. Casting a spell or a cantrip makes you switch. Okay, that would be so bad. Okay, so I would not yeah. want to do that. If I had four, then I, I would go down, five. up, down, up. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. If this fails, I believe. I, I believe. <laughs> Could be wrong as fuck. <laughs> Wait. What if I hit that guy for two and then I hit three on the other guy. I'll just switch with him side by side. I don't know, bro. I don't know. I, I just got to see what happens. I okay, I'm so. still up here. Thought so. It worked. Yeah, yeah. Down up, down up. It, it, <laughs> Holy yeah, shit. I thought it counted per charge. I that was doing some that big on Leo. brain plays there, dog. I'm still thinking about that sushi. Dude, Dude that sushi's so good. I was actually thinking about that earlier today, too. Oh, my God. Meow. <laughs> Oh my god, you're a kid. Yeah, I got the best magic. Well, I look magic away and start talking about sushi for five seconds, and you become <laughs> a cat form. And I turn into a cat. Also, I explained in the middle of this fight to our non Baldur's Gate friend how barbarians work. Oh, it's because I'm raging, duh. If I'm raging, spellcasting is blocked, duh. Tactical. Yeah. Of course. 
Oh, that's sad. If you're an angry boy, you can't cast your spells. Well, because I'm a barbarian, so I shouldn't be casting spells really much what have you in the first place. None of my business. <laughs> really much what have you anyway. <laughs> Look, you know what saying. It's none of my business. It's none of my business. <laughs> Eventually, Nair falls, and we take his ass hat, hat, wear, and head as proof of our victory. This makes all the mushroom people dance with glee because this game is for psychopath. Nearby, we spot some hook horrors to fight, so we send in my friend's barbarian. What could possibly go wrong? Right off. Go for it, I guess, because I'm a little wounded. Yeah, I'm not. I'll take everything there. Even their life! Whoa. Ow. <laughs> Being level 5 means we can safely fight the scary cocoon spider underneath the Blighted Village now. Um, I think... The best option is to burn the web out yes. from under it. Fireball. Do it. Do it. Boom. All right, you suck. You didn't hit the web. You're supposed to hit the web. You're a terrible person. Um, hmm. You're bad at this. You could have just stopped talking after I uh, got the message the first time. <laughs> okay, now hit the web. Hit the fucking web, bro. Let's get this over with. <laughs> Let's fucking go, redemption. <laughs> I still hit him. With, that's what's weird about it. Oh, dude, Give if they're all the way down there, this throw is going to do mega damage. That's it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay, yeah. That's, uh, that's amazing. Let's throw. Let's fucking throw, boys. You know what? I mean, I don't have Tavern Brawler, but I got a couple of javelins to throw anyway, so... <laughs> Here we go. Boom, yeah, I did it. That was on me. You saw it. We collect a buttload of potions, gold, and camping supplies from the hag. Torment. Fucking teleport. What? Why couldn't it give me the extra what? damage? I just saw the word wild magic teleport pop up like a hundred times on my screen. Then we chase after the hag to show her who's truly the ugliest in town, to which she responded by ripping out a chunk of her own hair, making her truly horrific looking. Well played, hag. And we revived Connor out back for some reason. I don't know. Just seemed like the sorcerer thing to do. Too stupid. Wand wasn't the best Red caps. Next, we head out to the Gith Yankee roadblock to witness our orc passives activate. Hmm, cool, good, they work. <laughs> <laughs> You're seriously gonna blame Grolock right now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> hey, the old person You're is passive. gone. You're passive. Yeah, he dude. died and then passive. Wild. We also find out that we have Shadow Heart's relic. Hold the Shadow Heart. Neat. And then we meet up with an old lady who wants to raise a Gith Yankee outside of Gith society. We agree and we intimidate our way into the crash because orcs are just so goddamn intimidating. Plus three, plus three is 22. Oh no shot, bro. 22 intimidated. God. You've a strong did our, spirit. Did tits just intimidate that, dude? Wow, she Go, loves me. To she captain. totally loves she it. She's just like, oh. Here, we experience a really hard lesson in the game being able to kill us at any moment without a single turn being given to us to play against it, as the wrong dialogue choices with the Gith result in me instantly getting full killed. But invisibility allows for a clean escape and revive session. See, escaping fights is just as important as winning fights in this game, because boy, do I wish Larian actually allowed for more ways to fail that didn't result in just immediate murder, especially on honor mode. Oh well, lesson learned. Fireball first, dialogue never. We stole their egg. I need to help. Oh my god, I didn't think it would hit you. Wiped out their entire crush for XP. Yeah! Perfect. Feels like, what the fuck, bro? Don't use dark tendrils. Come on. Oh, hell yeah, an intangible flump. A flump. Here comes the flump. I can't wait to use a flump. flump. And told Vlacketh herself to suck our wild magic wielding wands. You must accept, refuse, and know my fury. No, which we can enlarge and reduce in size, by the way. Lady. Appears as if Garlack has been randomly reduced. Grolnock has been randomly enlarged. 
God and damn Will it. has been randomly reduced. <laughs> no! <laughs> With level six as a reward for us genociding the Githyanki Crush, we're now ready to head deep into the Shadowlands of Act Two. With wild magic, huh? Not too shabby. Huh? Same as last playthrough, we play the loot and summon Spider Man right away to introduce him to our wildly fireballs of, um, fire. Also, did you know Counterspell is just a suggestion that relies on RNG? It's not a guarantee. I didn't. Yeah, no sanctuary for you. Did he say get sanctuary? I literally counterspelled him. What the fuck, dude? Smash cut to the last light in, where we meet with Shakira, Shakira. Who thinks we're sus? Huh? I can't even Im imagine why. Anyways, I then tried to cast Mage Armor on myself and activated Wild Magic on a 5% chance and set everyone around me on fire. Well, what? someone else's prophecy. Now oh no, I cast Mage Armor on myself and it randomly chance. exploded fire everywhere. Uh, are they aggroed? I'm just gonna, you know what? I'm just gonna follow them to prison. I'm going to jail. Krolnok just went oh, to jail oh, for uh, maybe burning a lot of people on fire. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I hear them going, oh, oh. <laughs> oh no. Shopping here gives us some serious Karlak armor that raises her strength and makes her not movable. Damn. And slowly we realize that there's just too much good stuff here and not enough gold to go around. So it's time we gave our homie Gale back at camp a purpose, or at least something to do. So he became oh, the rogue feeling. camp thief of our party. That's worth 1,500 gold. Wow, Gale. I'll just take all of this. Since we're currently on track to save all the tieflings, we save Roland. Maybe he's right. Here. No. Perhaps instead he's right here. Holy. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> that was a cane oh, trip. I didn't know you could do that. That was you a, that was a that. can trip. <laughs> and we save Arabella, who is a much cooler character than I realized if you take her all the way to the end. And then we begin to topple the three Ketherick brothers, starting with Malice the Doctor. <laughs> then Gringoth the Toll Collector. Bam, 11,060 XP. That's a lot. And finally, my favorite side character in the entire game, Fissibold. The bartender. Oh, thank God. By now, my friend decided he hadn't been sucked into enough fleshy walls lately, so, uh, he got sucked into a fleshy wall. What the f <laughs> What was that face? <laughs> This accidentally lands him on the other side of the jail cells underneath Moonrise Towers. So we get a free jailbreak without even breaking a sweat. <laughs> breaking it. You, you uh, see what I did there? I'm funny. Why jailbreak everyone? Oh, I don't know, maybe. Have you seen the rewards you get? Damn, Roland gave us seven, 470 bucks. Thank you. Bro, what? What? I talked to Alfira and she just gave me purple armor. 448 gold, three scrolls, two potions, and then three more potions. Your cantrips add additional damage equal to your charisma modifier. What? At this point, Halsing tells us he wants to cure the Shadowlands of the curse or whatever. So we have to find and save some boy named Oliver, the Shadow. Okay, good work. Why can't I just stay here playing? I had everything I've ever wanted right here. Shut your I'm dumbass leaving. bitch. Here. In exchange for doing this, Halsing agreed to give up his shape shifting ways to work as our camp cleric, capable of buffing the living shit out of us each day that we actually remember to. Moving on, we uh, kill the goblins in Catherick's throne, yeah. meet up with this big evil wizard named Balthazar, and groan our way through the worst part of this game the Shar Trials. We free young gear rather than fight him because it's easier and finish up the trials as fast as we can to pick up the night spear. And then we encounter the worst thing that can happen to anyone in honor mode. And wait, I hate, no, this is dumb. <laughs> and he realized, oh no, what's happening? Oh, uh, bro. What the fuck? Bro. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. How do we get out, though? 
Um, uh, we hope that they fail their. I can return to camp, dude. Shit. Oh, I, I couldn't. I can't. I can't return to camp. Oh, what? I can. Holy shit. What the fuck? Carlac. Uh. Yeah. My fucking god, bro. What? Uh. Carlac can be revived. Will is stuck in a fucking pit. <laughs> <laughs> if we didn't have half orcs, we would have just lost our we honor. Would, that would have been game over. We would have literally. I, I literally thought it was crap. game over because I just saw everybody start falling. You're like, dude, yeah. and I went, uh, uh, I was blowing my nose, and then fucking, I literally looked over and I was like, oh, we're dead. Like that's GGs, and then I saw that we still had one health. All right, withers. Um, require a I need to resurrect man. someone. I must <laughs> this is the price of well. Holy crap, bro. There is no rhyme or reason for Withers to not be able to revive somebody because they made their saving throws. Yep. <clears throat> That's it. That's We can't long rest. We can't. Yeah, and I tried to use a resurrection scroll and he's too far away, but yeah. maybe a fireball. Maybe I can cast telekinesis. I don't know. I'm just going to try everything. If you could telekinesis him into the fucking... Just try clicking his portrait. Try to telekinesis him into the chasm. Um, oh, 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 throw bombs. I was literally bombs. just going to say, when in doubt, throw bombs out. When bro. in doubt, throw bombs. He's making his saving throws again. He died. He died. Oh, my God. Holy you did it, bro. Crap. You fucking did it. Holy cow. Wow, bro. Run to Withers. When in doubt, throw bombs. It fixes everything. That was literally what I was about to say. And you're like, bombs. I was like. The wild magic run I still stands. Oh my god, dude. <gasps> yeah, yes. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. How are we gonna get across that elevator? We can use uh, infinite misty steps and dimension door scrolls. We'll go buy scrolls. We'll just teleport. We don't have to, we don't have to do it. <sighs> Long rest. Oh my god. <gasps> oh my god, we're all <laughs> I don't really know what to say that the clips don't say already at this point. Larian should just stick to making teleporters if this is how their elevators can break. And this isn't a new glitch. Other people have experienced this long before us. And if you're watching this, a workaround. Always use one character to ride the elevator in the Shar Trials and hit the waypoint at the bottom, which allows everyone else to teleport safely. Beyond the Trials, we threw a bunch of bombs at Balthazar, we free Dame Ayland, and we storm Moonrise Towers with Jahira. Hey, look at that. We even reached level 8, which I swear it feels faster than our last playthrough. So let's take our level 8 powers to save Mizora for Will and Zevlor for the tiefling achievement. Finally, the big bad of Act 2 shows himself. Mercule, Lord of Bones, and God of Death itself. We throw bombs at him and make him go boom boom. That's for Wolprin. And unlike our last attempt at this fucking honor mode shit, we cured the Shadowlands, baby. And with that, our party continues our adventure into the final act of the game, Baldur's Gate itself, with wild magic. <laughs> Who would have thought? We saved that spooky voice in our heads by fighting off some Githyanki monks. We don't really like them anyway. Dead. I talked to an ox who says he needs help getting in the city. Okay. And we immediately make a beeline for the circus to cheat at an already rigged game of spin the wheel. This sends us into a Jurassic Park world with a legendary throwing weapon at the end that is perfect for Carlac. Gale tries to rob the first store he sees for us, but uh, fails and forces us to use um other methods. Boom. Oh, there's the armor. I'm getting the fuck out of here. We meet Gortash, pretend to go along with what he says for now, and head over to the legendary magical tower, Sorcerer Sundries. We then steal a lot of things from Sorcerer Sundries. Remember that mirror I scared into letting me walk through it way earlier in the game with the spooky book? Now we can read a new book that actually unlocks the full potential from the first book. This permanently unlocks a spell. 
that can summon four minions to fight alongside you every day, which aren't really that good, but they do pull aggro and have their own health pool. After hearing that the owner of Sorcerer Sundries is actually like a really big fan of our immortal friend, Dame Aelin, uh, we decided to bring her to him to say hello. Dame Aelin is watching. She is indomitable. And when her face lights the shadows of your wrongdoing, you are broken by its beauty. Okay. Jumping down the floating furniture in the tower and activating the north button will teleport you to the best mage gear in the entire game. You need to see invisible things and pass an intelligence check, which I was only able to do by giving Karlak the tiara of intelligence boosting that you find off the smart ogre in the beginning of the game. After that, we sneak right past the Thieves Guild. Absolutely fuck the Thieves Guild. I want nothing to do with this stupid place. I don't care about the consequences. Fans of the channel will know why I hate this stupid place. We find a submarine that we can't use without pissing off Gortash, so... And then, Gale gives me, genuinely, one of the worst scares I have ever gotten in any horror game before. We both know the ore by carry inside me is powerful enough to burn away the absolute... But what stays my hand? Obstance? Yep, and we need you for that, Gail. Misplaced morals? The inevitable has been delayed far too long already. With pleasure. You tell him to do it? Is that a great idea? Go ahead. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, no way. Wait, 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 wait. Is he doing it now? No. He can't be. Okay, it's Orin. Mm. Oh my god, that actually <laughs> fucking scared me. It was fucking Orin. Oh my god, bro. I thought we just lost the entire I thought it was Oh my fucking god, dude. <laughs> Shush. Shush. Orin oh will take god. care of you. He literally pretends to blow up and makes you think your playthrough is about to end right then and there before your eyes because of your dialogue choices. Oh my God. And then it's all a big farce. It's all a joke. It's a prank, bro. Played by Orin, the final of the big bad three you've learned about up until this point. I was afraid. Then I was laughing. Then I was petrified. Because up until now, we planned on using Gale to end the game for us. We've come too far, sank too many hours to fail now. So why not have Gale just do the most wild magic thing there is and blow himself up? Every cast I spell may be my last. Do you really think I fear death, right? But now, Orin has him. Not Halsing, not Jahira. Orin kidnapped our free ticket out of the final boss. This is actually the worst case scenario for our half-orc duo. We continue onwards and realize we were late to the wine festival, meaning we didn't prevent any bad things from happening to it. Timmy the orphan and Molly the orphan. I miss Cora. Oh no, this is... Oh no. <laughs> Sorry, orphans. We had to where people that are causing these bad things, i.e. killing people, are, and the game fails to put me in a cutscene and instead just triggers a glitchy start to the fight. Carlax in dialogue? Yeah. With who? I don't know. I tried to click over to it and it doesn't pick me. I will save you. Oh, Baldur's now. Gate. <sighs> In this fight, the game then tries to tell us that 25 divided by 2 equals 0. I would go on to learn later that this is because of the evasion feature in the game that says when a spell or effect would deal half damage on successful throws, it deals no damage if you succeed and only deals half damage if you fail. So all of the spells in the game that feature minimum damage for being such a high spell slot, yeah, you can just throw all that out the window. None of that matters anymore because every enemy will have this feat now. And you'll have to right click on every single enemy you meet looking for evasion and things like that because a lot of this game's difficulty comes from just stripping away all your options. I, all this to say, Baldur's Gate feels a little bit like it's cheating you at times. You should never feel bad about cheating back a little bit, like reviving over and over or dropping barrels. Because if 25 divided by 2 equals 0 wasn't bad enough, there's a locked safe in this place with zero loot in it. What, what, what game designer makes a strong box that's up here that's locked in the wall that should have some goodies in it that's fucking empty? It's empty? Who does that? It's empty. Like, like it's completely empty? empty? Completely empty. Nothing was in this thing. Locked behind a 20 roll. 
mind you. I immediately began shooting off fireballs like a madman because this game is making me insane. And I hit level 10, where I decided to mix things up a little bit. Since I already have so many cool temporary use scrolls, and I'm not really messing around with much more different meta magic, I put one level into wizard, resulting in my wild magic being able to proc off of a way bigger list of spells. Some forbidden spells. I put one fucking class point into wizard. And I shit you not, I was able to read two of the fucking temporary scrolls that we got in Act 3. And now I know Artistry of War. Anyways, using a bag of hands we find off of our last fight, we are granted access to an audience with Saravok Onchev, a legendary ball spawn who is actually the main antagonist of Baldur's Gate 1. I attempted to intimidate him like our half-orcs usually do, but uh, I rolled a 19 out of 20, resulting in him doing the only possible thing anyone knows how to do in this game, which is just attack you immediately. Foolish me. I should have just walked up and set him on fire or something when I had the chance. Why do I keep trying to talk to people in this game when I know they're all just gonna kill me? To counter this bullshit with a little more bullshit, we drop all of the barrels we have. <laughs> and? And, um, bomb it. All right, Sarah Vaca, see what you got. <laughs> he has more health now. <laughs> we nearly die here to the point that my friend and I are like genuinely getting choked up, but since Carlac can drop barrels from her inventory for free as much as she wants, and the ground is already ignited with flame, each barrel instantly blows up every time she drops it. Let's Get go! Fucked. Let's go! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! You dropped that barrel, didn't you? I dropped two barrels. What? <laughs> this fight ignites an explosion based passion in our barbarians. Um. We need more bombs. Thankfully, jailbreaking the Iron Gnomes means we can actually pay them a visit in Act 3 and buy bombs from them daily. This is huge. We love this. We will be using this. On a side note, I've been trying desperately to raise my approval with Carlac, so I even go through the Carnival minigame, but nothing helps. No matter how much infernal iron or conversation I give her, she won't hit me with the achievement that I so desperately want. So I take out my frustration by sending her up on stage alone, knowing the clown is a disguised maniac. Look, dude, no wonder she doesn't like you, bro. <laughs> then I go back to camp and fuck a bear. Oh boy. And you know... While I'm getting ran through by a literal beast of nature, I think to myself, what haven't I done for Karlak that's keeping her so hesitant? Should I kill Gortash, the one she most hates? Okay, fine, I will. I'll topple the hierarchy of the entire city for my barbarian girlfriend. So I tell Jahira, hey, you have a new purpose in life. You got a respect to be a stealth god, and you need to sneak into the Steel Foundry Watch with a special mega bomb prepared by the Iron Gnomes. And being the absolute living legend she she is, she successfully sneaks past everything, lockpicks her way in, and plants the mega bomb in the heart of the factory. Jahira, we will remember your service. Well done, Jahira. She planted the hell bomb for democracy. Yeah, I'll see her back at camp. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, because she oh, dies one way or another. We age. get a cutscene exit, and all four of us are there. Um, I can't view it. That's sad. Oh, uh, well, we're outside, and that place exploded. Bye-bye. Goodbye, Steel Watch. With Gortash's security out of the way, we storm the castle he's hiding in. <laughs> oh, you get health back, dude. Also, free food. We hear Gortash likes traps, so we build our own trap at the bottom of the stairs and just lure the enemy guards down the staircase into it. Fodder. We make it to the top, we find Gortash, we fight Gortash, and we end Gortash. Fucking easiest boss in the entire fucking game, dude. That's Easy money, life. dude. Easy money. It's finished. Wow. It's done. She's like, I need to see him up close. 
Carlac responds by leaving my party and immediately going back to camp. Fuck this playthrough. All right, we're going to Ball's Temple and we're going to rescue Gale, our ticket to a free pair of golden dice. We've learned before that if you want to speak with Orin's dead mother using the Speak with the Dead spell, you actually learn that it was her grandfather, Saravok, who ordered her mother to kill her, which is something Orin doesn't know. And since she sees Saravok so highly, this kind of rocks her worldview a little bit. So after some camp cleric buffs in the strong arms of Daddy Halsing, we approach Orin and drop the knowledge bomb on her bloodlusting ass. Yeah, <laughs> she just ignores him entirely if you Aww. bring that up. Oh my no. god. No, 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 no! For the shroud, coward! Here we go, bro. Probably the hardest fight that you actually do have to do in this game. Yep. We figure out the strat slowly and started picking off her followers by knocking them off the edge with thunder arrows, a trick we had to learn the hard way at the end of our last playthrough. And after learning that 39 divided by two equals zero. What? Why? Because 39 divided by two is zero. Thanks, Larian. Orin goes down to the wild magic users. Let's fucking go, you stupid slut! Right. Yes. Fuck yes. We immediately grab Gale and take him to meet his god, Mistra, and they have a chat. The future of magic rests on your shoulders, Gale of Waterdeep. You know, that wasn't as, uh, you're gonna blow up, yes ma'am, as I wanted it to be. Yeah, yeah. With Carlac clearly not giving me what I need and Gale being literally crucial to the end of the game, the only way forward is to bring Gale over to the wild magic side, right? But uh, we already have two sorcerers and only one barbarian without Carlac. So... Barbarian! 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 Enough messing around. Let's put this silly honor mode to rest and finish this. We approach the location where the true final boss is hiding, the Netherbrain. My friend says he specifically didn't want to handle this cutscene, and lo and behold, Wait, it's Why is Ned? Why? <laughs> <laughs> oh, good luck, Ned. He winds up in the cutscene. He then proceeds to roll two different nat ones when up against the Netherbrain. <laughs> my, uh, my super strength barbarian rolled a nat one, and I rolled another nat one. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> no. <laughs> I can't lie, this felt true and cinematic and like how the game really should be. Passing these checks only serves to weaken the brain in the final fight, but we're not really planning on fighting it anyway, so this is just pure comedy for us. After being saved by the Emperor and told we need to become Illithid ourselves to stop the brain, Gale of motherfucking Waterdeep steps the fuck up and says, hey, I'll blow myself up willingly. Oh? I think it's time we reconsider the orb. This yes. Power, I could put an end to this whole thing. Yes. Crown, nether brain, absolute. Yes. You truly sacrifice yourself for us, Gale? If I'm destined to yes, die, I can that. think of worse yes, ways. Say that. At least if I use the orb, I can ensure the brain dies with me. Do not mistake me. I want to live. I've been careless enough in my life in the past. Once I'm in position. I'll ensure you are removed to a safe vantage point to watch the fireworks. Yeah! You need not die alongside me. No but surrender your soul in becoming an illithid. You're really serious about this. Entirely. Let's go! Please. At least consider my offer. We just have to make it to the elevator. Very well. If the time comes, I'll call on you to use the orb. I will not let you down. Oh my god, dude, what? let's go! Oh. This literally allows you to bypass anyone on your team turning into an Illithid to progress the final chapter of the game. And as we thank Gale for not even requiring a skill check to sacrifice himself, we enter the room where you get to see all the allies and friends you made along the way. The strange Ox, Arabella, Dame Aelin. We actually have quite the small army here. So we take a peek at how truly destroyed the city is thanks to the Netherbrain. And really, at this point, it all starts to sink in, you know? 
We made it. We're actually here at the end of honor mode using wild magic. What the fuck? This can't be real. We take our position in the tallest tower overlooking the courtyard where the second to final fight plays out. And then this happens. We had two fucking. Oh no. That's actually really bad. <laughs> I just wanted to haste. God dang it, fucking this about wild sums magic. Up our, this about sums up our wild magic playthrough, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> what follows is the most just biggest Lord of the Rings stylist war that this game has to offer up until this point. Multiple different battles, all playing out on several different fronts, with our wild magic party tucked away at the top. Whoa, bro. Whoa. Absolutely massive oh. healing spells. Yeah, bro. Okay. Okay, okay. Gale throwing illithids oh, off wait, of buildings. Wait, wait, wait. I got that illithid. 90% chance. Wait. You should let me damn it. He's dead. Holy shit. Half orcs throwing here. beholders at goblins. Blind all of us up there. You ever been hit in the face with a beholder? <laughs> this ending is truly, unironically, Epic. Oh. Yes. Nice, yes. dude. You were nice. I gave you wild magic and it got burning. Hell yeah, dude. I was dude. like, I'm going to fucking roll it. <laughs> yes. Wild magic. Afterwards, we use some potions of invisibility and what just jump straight to the end of the game where we have one last conversation with our friend Gale. Frank, it's high above okay. The city yeah, you and him. Far away from any innocence. Oh. End this now. Yes. Stop the absolute and Yes, baby. The stage is set for my final act. Mistress bidding and the redemption that lies beyond. You brought me right where I need to be. I have no right to ask more of you. It's time I spirited you to safety. For this is a fate I must face alone. Go. Let's go. Then this is farewell. Then this is farewell. Oh my god. Then this For is now, farewell, Gail. At least. There's endless wonder out there. Infinite possibilities. Perhaps fate will bring us back together before the universe dims. You've never Gods. looked more magical. Hey, wait, Fair. you're a barbarian now. Uh. Hey, wait. Hold on. He's taking us away. Yeah, he said he was going to spirit us away. To safety. Oh my god! I was genuinely feeling a roller coaster of emotions right now. The ending isn't perfect, but that's what makes it feel so real. Not everybody is going to get their way. Gale is on his way to use cursed Netherese magic inside him to blow himself up and make the goddess of all magic proud. There's no way three level 12 adventurers can do this. This is beyond anything for anyone. It's a fucking nether brain. So now, all we can do is watch. I love it. My name's Gale of Waterdeep. A pleasure to make your acquaintance. Oh, Our that's what he says to us when he meets brief. us. He says a pleasure to meet your acquaintance. Farewell. Yeah. And happy land. Yes, dude. I love you, Gale. It was truly you all along. He really was him. We wanted nothing to do with Lazel, nothing to do with Shadowheart. The two that we did care Mama about, Carlac and Will, fucking didn't love us. Yeah. Yeah. Probably chose him instead of Will. Ooh! Yo. Holy shit. That's it? This is the cutscene that plays after you beat it. Wild magic for the win. The wild magic beat honor mode. I can't believe it.
Gail became the star of our Wild Magic run by going out in a blaze of glory. The one thing all Wild Magic users truly yearn for. But Gail, I can't believe he's gone. You can't believe he's gone. You must remember him, not just for his triumph, but for his courage. A most noble sacrifice. We have achieved all that I desired. Thanks to Gale, we are free. Karlak left me without giving me my achievement. We tried Karlak. The game just wouldn't let us heal you. You know, Gale just exploded, and for you to explode right after, it's just kind of like, I don't know. Yeah. Like, not the most points for originality. All exploded out. We'll never forget that. We got our gold dice on honor mode. On. <laughs> you have earned With four wild magic users. All wild the legends of the sword coast. No heavy armor. No cleric. You are the we saviors the shit the heart. of... And for the very first time, my friend and I get to witness the epilogue of Baldur's Gate 3. I approach the epilogue reunion with Halsing, a shocking twist that I could have never seen coming in a million years, and Will basically started uh, freestyling. Wait. Whatever. What? I didn't record it because I'm a big, dumb, stupid half-orc head, but uh, speaking to Gail's illusion made me almost cry. Because if you try to hug him and can't because he's an illusion, he will simply reply, How, How fortunate, fortunate I, was I was to know someone like you. Before poof, vanishing for good. Withers gives us all some immortal knowledge to part on, and with that, we complete Baldur's Gate 3 on honor mode using wild magic. The greatest friends I could dream of. To you. Thanks so much for watching. Yeah, we did it. To it's wild cool. magic. Wild magic. Yes, complete there is. the no, game in honor mode. honor mode. Oh hammer. Directed by Sven Vink. You absolute fucking giga chad.